If I prayed for rain, the rain could never happen. Because the moment we ask for something to happen in this world, in the asking for, we are affirming that it does not exist now. I invite you to think about that. When we ask the universe for something, we are implying that whatever we're asking for, or asking about, or asking to appear, or asking to happen, is not present in the moment. And in that way, we are actually affirming in the field the very thing that we were hoping to change. I hope that makes sense. The quantum field that we talked about in the last episode, if you recall, it is the container for all things. It is the bridge between us and the world, between what happens in here and what happens out there. And it is the mirror in our world for what we claim to be true in our hearts. So if you think about that, it makes perfect sense. If you're asking for rain, as I thought my friend David was going to do, if he asks that, then the field interprets that as him asking for no rain, because, because the rain's not there. So I looked at him and I said, David, if you didn't pray for rain right now, what did you just do? And he said, when I closed my eyes, he said, I felt the feeling as if the rain has already happened. I felt the feeling of what it feels like, he said, to stand in my Pueblo village with my naked feet in the mud and the mud is there because there's been so much rain. He said, I smell the smells of what it smells like when the rain rolls off the earthen walls of our Pueblo homes. He said, I felt the feeling of what it feels like when I walk through the fields of corn that are this high against my naked chest and they're this high because there's been so much rain. He said, I felt the feeling of what it feels like when my prayer is already answered. And then I gave thanks for what has already happened. He said, in those few seconds, I felt the feelings and I gave thanks for the rain that has already occurred. This is a very, very powerful story to me, and it illustrates a quantum principle, because there is a huge difference between working toward an outcome and beginning as if the outcome is already present. I invite you to think about that. But she'd say the healing will happen slowly over a long period of time. She said it'll heal a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, a little bit the next day, until pretty soon it's all gone. And if we embrace that, if we think that way, if we accept that, that is precisely the way the healing happens. This is a linear way of thinking about the world. And I'm not saying it's right, wrong, good, or bad, because there are times in our lives we definitely want to think linear, okay? Definitely want to think linear. When you're, when you're putting together, if you're working on a, an assembly line at an auto factory, and you're putting together the car that I might drive <laughs> later in that year, I want you to be linear. I want you to do everything step by step by step, working toward the goal. But we have just discovered, science is telling us, we are not bound by the linear laws of physics as we know them today. And that we have the ability to be in both worlds. And when it comes to our healing, there's a huge difference between working toward the healing and coming from the outcome that the healing has already happened, or in the case of my friend David, coming from the outcome that the rain has already appeared. Well, we went into the nearest town, Taos, New Mexico. We had lunch that day. And by the time I came back onto my property later that afternoon, something began to happen that we had not seen for a very long time. Big black clouds were rolling in over the Sangre de Cristo mountains and it started to rain that afternoon. And it rained and rained and rained. It rained all afternoon, it rained all night, it rained all the next morning. It was a mess, there was so much rain. The roads were flooded, the fields were flooded.